You came here because you want to learn how to make yard dice. So let's do it right now. So today I have a really simple, really awesome, fun, usable project for you. Uh, these dice that we're going to make were motivated by a Facebook curb alert post in Marketplace. Now curb alert is when somebody says, look, I'm putting something out to the curb for the garbage men and either you get it or they do. And the guy who posted this said that he had a beam and it was used in his garage and it was really messed up. He was very open about it. He had it on the floor in his garage and when he hit it with his car, he knew that that's where he should stop his car. So this thing is beat up, tore up, pieces are messed up, we're gonna have to find the right sections to use, but the greatest part about this project is that it only cost me in total $1.26, and it will cost you just about the same. I'll show you how later on in the video. Now I wanna talk about this materials list in kind of a beginner's way. I'm gonna tell you about the easiest entry level tools that you can use to make this, and of course if you have a better option and you can upgrade from there, that is awesome. Now the first thing you're gonna need is the template, which shows you exactly where to put all of the dots on each side of the dice. Well, technically you only need the number six. I'll show you how to modify that later on in the video so it'll streamline the process and make this all much simpler for you. We also need a miter box, a miter saw, a drill, a three quarter inch Faustner bit, we're gonna talk about those later, a hammer, one single nail, 126 pennies, sanding blocks, which of course you could swap out with sandpaper if you need to, a dowel that's no bigger than three quarters of an inch, a tape measure, and of course a pencil. Most importantly with this free beam that I got for the project was that I took my time and found out all of the issues that the beam had so that I could identify them and get rid of those pieces of wood and just use the good stuff for the project. Now, it's just as easy as cutting out the bad pieces, right? Nope. It's never that easy. So quite some time has gone by since I shot the last shot. And that was because something really obnoxious was happening. And I noticed it in the last project. Uh, and I should have done something about it then, and instead it cost me time now. Uh, take a look at the last project I did. It was the framing of the chalkboard. But look at this. Now this is the top left corner of that chalkboard. And you see that gap? It's not supposed to be there. And for most people, it's not a big thing. My wife didn't mind it because I'm not some fine woodworker. I'm just a DIY guy. But that two and a half degree little gap there was driving me crazy. So I threw a combination square on top of one of the pieces I had just cut to see how bad it really was. It's pretty bad. A combination square has a perfect 90 degree angle and putting it on something allows you to see if what you cut is exactly 90 degrees. This light, says that it is not. And the worst part is, I had no idea how to fix my miter saw. So at this point, I really didn't know what to do. Um, I knew that my miter saw wasn't cutting at 90 degrees and you can't make cubes without that. So I started searching the internet for ways to fix my miter saw. And of course, I found it with uh, this guy, Jonathan Katz Moses. Now, if you know that name from my page, uh, it's probably because you follow my Instagram account, which is also Burke Makes Stuff. I put up a really late night post because I had received a package I was super excited about from Jonathan Katz Moses. It was a dovetail guide that I uh, bought from him that I'm really super excited about and that there are videos coming for. He absolutely saved this project without knowing it. He has a wonderful YouTube page that you should definitely, after this video, go check out. It's amazing. The stuff that he makes blows my mind. He's a, a fine woodworker where I'm kind of like a tinkerer and a DIY guy. He makes amazing things. And he has a tutorial video on how to tune and fine tune and fix your miter saw. And I watched it about six or seven times, no exaggeration. And then I finally went back into my miter saw and while watching it on my phone, fixed my miter saw to do what I needed to do. So Jonathan, thank you for that. After going through the video and fine tuning the miter saw, I decided to throw my digital angle finder on it to see how close I was. And as you can see here, I'm one tenth of a degree off. For this miter saw, that's perfectly fine. And after the cut, this is what it's supposed to look like. Oh yeah. And now that the power tools actually are working correctly, this is just a matter of marking out your measurements on your wood board and cutting it out. 
Now because we're going to be cleaning off all of the gross sides of this reclaimed wood with one blade thickness, which is also called the kerf, we need to take that into account. The blade is exactly 1 16th of an inch, so on each side that has to be cut off, you need to add 1 16th. Just realized, other than fire safety, I've never really talked with you guys about um, all the other safety you need in a shop. Really quick, uh, eyes, ears, nose, that's it, man. Earplugs, huge help. Uh, the amount of noise that's being put out of these machines, it can hurt your ears. This helps a ton. Breathing, uh, breathing is a good thing you need to be alive, and your eyes, they just help to see. So cover them, make sure they're protected. Back to work. For the next part of this project, it is much easier to use these. Uh, these are templates that lay out exactly where you have to put the dots on each one of the dice sides. These are not mine. I found them online. I will put a link in the description below to them so that you can have them if you need them. Uh, but I, the more I'm thinking about this, the more I think I only really need this one. Uh, number six. Here's why. So this is the number six template, and really it's the only one we need. By connecting the top dot on one side with the bottom dot on the other side, we can find out where the exact center is. And using this and this alone, we can figure out where all of the dots need to be on all of our dice. Now by punching a hole in the middle of each of these sections, we can mark out number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. Now lining up your template on the top of the dice, you're going to use your hammer and nail to mark out the dead center of each hole, remembering that opposite sides should add up to the number 7. So number 1 will be opposite number 6, number 2 will be opposite 5, and 3 will be opposite 4. After using the nail to mark out the number with the corresponding side of the dice, it's just a matter of lining up your Forstner bit and drilling them out. A Forstner bit is a drill bit designed specifically to drill a perfectly straight hole into wood, which is exactly what we want for this project. Since there's 21 holes in each dice and 6 dice, that means that there's 126 holes in these dice. So after drilling them all out, I took it over to my 1 inch belt sander and cleaned up all of the sharp edges and tried to give the dice that rustic look I was going for. We're going to go to hand sanding now just for the last little bit to make sure we get everything nice and beautiful. Remember we want them to be rustic, so we don't want them too perfect and too exact. We want them to be a little bit rough, um, so you don't want to go too far with all your sanding. Let's do it! All the dice have been rough sanded at this point, and I thought we need to add a little bit of contrast between the color of the dice and the color of the dots. Now, I realized that we used a three quarter inch Foster bit. That's a good thing because pennies are exactly three quarters of an inch. So I thought it would be really interesting if we incorporate some pennies into this project. So I visited the bank of Liam, my five year old son. Hey Liam, can I have some of your pennies? What do you got for me? One, two, three dollars. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do is put a little dab of two-part epoxy in each of the holes, add a penny on top, and then use a dowel to make sure it's seated in the bottom of that hole. And uh, we only have to do that a 126 times. Dollar 26. Liam made out well on this one. Once the pennies were all smashed into place and the epoxy had a little time to dry, I thought it might be a good idea to protect these with a little bit of Waterlock's original sealer finish. It's made with tongue oil, so I know these will be protected for a good long while. There's just something about the juxtaposition between the soft natural wood and the bright shiny copper pennies that I absolutely love and find so beautiful about this project. If you enjoyed this project, don't stop now. There's plenty more on my YouTube channel for you to go check out. Awesome DIY, simple, easy to build, inexpensive things for you to do right now. If I had to choose one for you, it would be this one right here, which I know you'll love. Or if you don't want to go with that one, I would do this one. Ah, and of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, which would be crazy, click this button right here. Come and join the crew. Enjoy the videos.